Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Start with telling you about some of my most recent reads. I don't really round up my months or tell you about the random books that I pick up here and there unless they're part of a themed video or vlog. So yeah, um, this is just a random mix of books. They will be mostly horror because that is what I read, but I do have some thrillers, some fantasy, some dark fantasy books in here. First off, I did read episode 13 by Craig Dabui. Episode 13 is a story about found footage style investigations um, into the paranormal. And it was interesting. I really enjoyed the premise of this story. It had so many opportunities to be one of the best books that I've read in 2023. But for me, the dialogue really lacked. Mixed media kind of threw me off slightly. I found it very difficult to, to know the each individual characters, even though they do have their own journal sections. For me, reading it just felt like disjointed. Every character sounded the same. It all felt like one person. So that kind of let me down in this book. This one had so much atmosphere, um, just lacked in the character development section and the pacing of the story. So it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't great. So I am just reading it averagely. So I'm giving it a three. And then I read the Dead Tick the Atrin by Cassandra Carr and Richard Cadre. I think that's how I pronounce it. So essentially, The Dead Tick the Atrin is a very gory story about somebody who changes their career um, and we're following her journey through how her actions have impacted her life and everyone else's life around her and you're following the consequences of how she pissed off like a god so it's really cosmic and it was so fun to read the tension and spark that we kind of have between all of the characters made it for an interesting read so i really enjoyed that aspect of this story the difficult part for me was that the first third of this book was very difficult for me to get into. It felt like it was so slow to build, but then the second, like the, the following two thirds were just so intense and gory and very detailed that it felt like it sped up. So I really enjoyed the story from like two thirds in but I really did struggle with the first third, um, which I did consider a DNF. It was difficult for me to um, put myself in the shoes and really see myself in that situation. Um, so there is that little niggly element for me. So I would say that there was a lot of body horror and profanity in this. So if that's like something that you're not into, then I would probably err on the edge of caution. Cosmic horror is definitely something that I enjoy reading. So I give this one a four star. I did read another newer release. Um, so this one was a net galley read and it was all the parts of the soul. It was like beautifully dark. It was rich in like, European history but fictionalized and it made me very emotive and I think that when books are able to do that to me they are like one of my favorite reads of all time. So All the Parts of the Soul is essentially a story about um, witch trials um, but instead of it being like Salem based we're focused like 150 years before that in Europe when the witch craze kind of started and so oftentimes that gets left out of like modern day witch tales and like history so reading about it 
was so intriguing. I've always loved witchcraft based stories and I feel like they're really empowering and such a good way to humble yourself like how people back in the day were like faced with such horrific acts um so yeah all the parts of the soul follows um the witch craze um in europe was focused in around geneva area um and essentially it's different in the sense of this story follows a male perspective so usually we get witchcraft based stories and we're following the women's perspective but this time we are following the male perspective the male that we're following was a recluse but he was turned into a magistrate to conduct these witch hunts um, and try to clear the village of witchcraft and the acts of the devil so he goes on this journey to the village to try and wipe clean the village of witches and the mark of the devil it was so intriguing to read it from a different perspective um, and granted this was written by a woman so the fact that she used the male perspective was very interesting and I think that it was done really well I was getting so angry reading his perspective and what he thought about the women and I think that that was obviously on purpose so it was so well written I just love this story and yeah it was an incredible read um, I will say there is a lot of trigger warnings in this story there is discussions of a lot of dark topics but it is so worthwhile if you're not too triggered I would highly recommend checking out all the parts of the soul it's up there with one of the best books that I've read so far this year um, I've given it five stars absolutely adored it so next up we have I'll be alone for Christmas so this is a debut novel novella um, and I was chosen on NetGalley to read this and um, it was obviously a Christmas story but it's a Christmas thriller so I was like it's okay I'll read it at the start of November so it's not too far into my spooky season um, I don't mind reading it in November so yeah I read this at the start of November and it was such a quick read the story follows a woman who has just gone through a breakup and they booked a cabin for the Christmas period um, and she decided to go and stay in this cabin by herself rather than to waste the money so obviously she goes to this cabin and lots of weird things happen and she starts to feel uncomfortable and the story kind of develops from there I actually really enjoyed this but I think that's because it's one of my triggers there is a gradual build-up of dread in this story it's like little things that you start to then piece together in your head that something bad is going to happen so yeah it was that small like slow dread that built up over time but it just led to me feeling so much anticipation home invasion and people like stalking around your house is like something that is just a no from me so whenever I can read something like that it's so much fun because it's something that always gets my heart racing so yeah this one definitely did that this is definitely a really good book if you're going to be reading some darker Christmas related stories I would definitely check this out um, and it does include home invasion and like brutal gory scenes as well so next up I read Madison's Peculiar Adventure by SK Milgan really sorry I'm terrible with names but we're just gonna go with it 
Um, so this one was a fun, short little adventure story. I do believe this is part of a series, um, but it was a short, like, less than 100 pages of a story, so it was quite nice to read. Um, and it's quite bold for me to say, but it's like Narnia meets Hogwarts. Here we follow Madison, who is an orphan, growing up through life. Um, and learning the secrets of her family and her history it was quite an interesting, short, fast-paced, magical read. Um, and that was like literally what I was craving. So definitely hit a spot. I felt like it took me on an adventure as well. So yeah, it was really cute and a good read. So yeah, I give this one four stars. The last book I literally just finished today. So I do have it physically and that is Yellow Fist by R.F. Kwan. I think I'm the only person who didn't really like this book. So this is contemporary. It's marketed as like a thriller. So I had high hopes for this. Um, there was so much hype and everybody was loving this and it was like going to be the thriller of the year um it's probably still going to win goodreads awards um because everybody's reading it but i just didn't enjoy this like it wasn't horrible don't get me wrong this story um we follow a, a writer called june who uses her friend's manuscript to publish as her own work because she has passed away so yeah and then you follow the like the outcome of her stealing another author's work um and this author was asian but the writer who stole the work was white so this story for me was just slow there was so much build up it just seemed like it was a tick on the twitter discourse I was really hoping that this delivered more um, in the sense of what happens in publishing, um, talking about the racism elements and kind of just delving deeper. It's very surface level. The story did not develop in the way that I was expecting it to. There was so much hype that this was going to be the best book of the year. It was going to highlight so many issues and yeah it was just mediocre surface level i literally finished it and went was that it like the outcome was so annoying i hated the ending it's like i'm sorry what you did all of this to end a story in that way i don't get it like this story had so much potential and I just fell through for me. There was so much opportunity that was missed. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to read anything else by this author. I would love to read Babel. Do let me know in the comments if you've read Babel or Babel, however you want to pronounce it. Um, but this is my first read from RF Kwan. Um, I don't want to write them off this early, but I really disliked this. It wasn't great. It was so mediocre. Um, I was generous to give it a three, but on reflection, it's probably like a two star. Like, I was so hyped for that ending. And where was it? It just wasn't there very disappointed this was not a thriller this is just a contemporary story that talks about the hit that an author got online online surface level book that's all i can say didn't enjoy this one um and that's a really bad note to end on <laughs> so that is all the books that i have read so far Thank you so much for watching. If you've stuck to the end, let me know in the comments what your favourite read 
has been in November. And until next time, keep your pages turning and embrace the darkness. Bye!